Hey, how you guys doing? So I'm back with another video and yes, I know it's been a while since I made a video. It's been killing me, trust me, but I'm actually working a lot more than I used to. We'll talk about that later in the video, but for now we're gonna talk about Blender 2.8. Did I get it right this time? Yes, I did. So Blender 2.8 and I've been testing it out. I've been checking out the development, just seeing what's new with it, what's happening, so that I can let you guys know if you know it will be a game changer or not, talk about all the changes, do all these awesome videos about it. So right now I'm still doing the research. I've been creating a project, a little cute Spider-Man chibi animation 2D slash 3D project. I know a lot of things going on right now. I don't even have time to make this video but i'm making it anyways just to keep you guys up to date so yes i will talk about this project i'll show you what i'm doing i'll just show you a bit of blender 2.8 in this video and talk about it but i'll make a more specific video on that later on and also we will talk about channel news so first of all we're hitting 50k subscribers soon which is really awesome so you know, I, I want to upgrade the channel and the first thing I'm going to do is introduce 3D printing, which I already, you know, got. It's it's over there with the yellow tint thing. And it's a lot more complicated than I thought, so it'll take some time to get used to and try to figure out how to work with it. But anyways, I'll talk more about that later in the video and I also did some testing, which I'll show you and all of that. So anyways, for now, let's just get to Blender 2.8 and we'll keep on moving to other subjects later on. Okay, so let's jump right into Blender 2.8. So first things first, I'm using Blender 2.8 Alpha 2. So you can get whatever latest version they got on Blender.org through the experimental build. But anyways, once you open it, you're gonna see something similar to this. And that's the first thing you notice is that the default Blender theme is going to be the dark one, which is, in my opinion, a lot better. So if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I always use the Blender dark theme basically, because usually it's the, it's a brighter gray one. And I find this one to be better because it's a lot better to, it's a lot easier to visualize what's going on around with all the icons and the, you know, 3D objects when it's the darker theme and also it looks better in my opinion. So anyways, I'm quite glad with this change, but that's not the only thing. You're gonna notice that there are changes all over the place. So, you know, up over here, you got these options over here. So 2D animation, 3D animation, compositing, modeling. So if you just click in any one, let's say you want to sculpt, you can click on sculpting and you'll notice right away that everything around it changed and it's actually optimized for sculpting. So before you'd have to basically manipulate your Blender file to get something better for sculpting and then when you're texturing you have to change it and when you're animating you have to change it again. Now it's just, you know, just click on one of them and you, you get everything that's just set for you right there, which is really cool. Also, you're gonna notice that the matte cap is different. So now the matte caps are way better, which is really awesome. Since I you know, I sculpt in the channel, that's all, mostly all I do. So I'm really excited about the new matte caps. They look a lot better and you can easily import your own, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't wanna get into details on every little different change in this video. So we're gonna move on and go back to 3D animation over here, uh, actually modeling where it was before. So you can see there are different icons. You got the toolbar on the top, which we didn't have before. It used to be on the bottom. There are new stuff. For example, over here, you got overlays and shading. And this section is really cool. I'll show you that in a second. Also, obviously we have the Blender EV. So if you don't know what Blender EV is, I made a video on that. You know, what is Blender EV? And you can check it out on my channel. So you got that. And then as you can see over here, you don't have the uh, Blender internal anymore. So that was removed. But anyways, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves again, so let me just open the test file that I was working on to test Blender 2.8 and see everything that's going on. So the really cool thing about Blender 2.8 is that it has a lot of different changes, a lot of different improvements, uh, different ways of doing things. So even the hotkeys are going to change. And if you are a long Blender uh, term user, so if you, you've been using Blender for a long time, you might have some difficulty getting used to the new one for probably the first day or two. But that's about it. I mean, if you're a bit patient and you put your mind to it, you're gonna get used to it really fast and it just makes a lot more sense. So for now, not everything is still stable. You know, there are some crashes, the hotkeys are changing a bit. Uh, some things are not there, uh, but you know, that's to be expected. It's an alpha stage and I'm just testing things out for now anyways. So uh, as for the hotkeys, as I said, they, there are some different hotkeys. They're not all as they used to be. But weirdly, they make sense. Sometimes I just kind of figure them out. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really have anything in mind right now. For example, you know, playing the time lapse over here, 
the time lapse, the time uh, table. So if you want to play the animation, I think before it was Alt A, now it's Shift Space. For some reason, I, I just, you know, found it right away. It was kind of intuition in, in a weird way. So I don't know, it makes sense. So anyways, let's talk about the scene that I did or, you know, I'm working on, so it's not done yet. So I'm doing this little chibi cute spider thing with obviously a cat over here because, you know, I can't make sense in every scene. And uh, I got this little cute animation going on, mixing 2D and 3D, which is really cool because right now Grease Pencil is, you know, properly integrated into Blender 2.8, obviously still being improved and it's still not 100% stable, there are some issues, but it's really easy to use. I didn't animate before in Blender, I always had trouble understanding how to find the Grease Pencil and animate in it, and now it's just, it's perfect. You just hit 2D animation over here and you know, usually it would look a bit different. I think this over here would be Grease Pencil. So you got all of the points over here, the animation points, and you can change them and move the keys around. But basically you just create a Grease Pencil with Shift A. So you just create it over here, which we didn't have this before. Grease Pencil, blank, and you can figure it out. That's what I did, but then I'm sure there'll be videos on it soon. And I'll probably make a tutorial on it once, you know, the stable version of Blender 2.8 comes out. But anyways, Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going too fast, so let me just slow down over here and show you what's going on. So here we got a cat, and you know, I got this little cute animation where it moves his head, and you got these butterflies, they are made in Grease Pencil, and you got also that fish, so she's basically dreaming about the fish. Mr. Fluffy, actually, it's a he, wow. So uh, yeah, I created a male cat and I forgot about it. So anyways, Mr. Fluffy over here is dreaming about a fish, which I also made in Grease Pencil. So that's a really cool thing. You can quickly just add some drawings and animate them quite fast. So you can see over here in the coffee, again, it's just a test, a really quick one, but you can see you got all of this team going on and, and this really nice swirling effect over here as well. And then also the spider webs over here, they're not textures, they're just grease pencil that I ended up editing later on. So if I click this over here, so this is the grease pencil. Let me see, can I grab it? There you go. I can actually even edit it and sculpt it. So not just draw it, which is really, really awesome. So over here also, I got this little cute Spider-Man animation. For now, it's not done. It's only the eyes that are moving, as you can see with this angry sign over here, but that's about it. And uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll finish this scene soon and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's done. But for now, that's what it looks like. And this allowed me to test a lot of things in Blender. So the thing about Blender 2.8, it's, it's still in alpha. There, there were a lot of crashes and this is actually the 68th save that I have on this scene and I didn't really work on it for that long. So I've been saving all the time and incrementing the save just to make sure and I had a lot of crashes but they usually like they're the same thing. For example, when I was doing retopology with Spider-Man over here, there, there's a certain thing that if I do it, I think in the wireframe mode, which is a bit different from what you're used to. This is what the wireframe mode looks like. And you can get it to look like before as well, but it was really messy right now. It's a lot easier to manipulate. Anyways, uh, if I, would for example, extrude two vertices at the same time, at a point it might crash. So, you know, things like that. Once you know what crashes Blender, you stop doing it and you're fine. And only one instance where I actually crashed Blender, uh, doing some texturing and then switching from the texturing over here to, to the animation. Where is it? There you go, texture painted to the animation. It crashed Blender and I couldn't open that save file. So that's why you increment your save. Always make sure you increment it if you're working on a test build or experimental build of Blender. Anyway, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm doing my research with Blender 2.8 to get you guys all of the information, tell you what's new, talk about all of the features because there are a lot of things I'm not gonna cover in this video, a lot of different new additions and they changed a lot of stuff. And then, you know, you can also add your own HDRI, I think. If you click over here, go to shading, there you go, you can see there are different HDRIs in the scene as well to just test the shader and do stuff like that. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is the viewport. This is not Blender EV, so wow, they really improved the viewport. I think they call it the workstation render, uh, but yeah, that's basically what you used to see when you used to work in Blender 2.79. It's that boring one color thing and it, just, it did not look this good. And the reason is, is because if you click over here, you know, you can add cavity, you can add the shadow, uh, you can add outline. So you can add a lot of cool stuff that gives it this look. And it's, it's quite the neat trick because what I can do right now is just, you know, hit 
play and I can basically record my scene, my screen with OBS. So it's the program I'm using to record right now and take this out as an animation. So if I hit control space to make the screen bigger and I get really close and maybe put a camera and animate it, and then I just basically take this out, then the render time is basically instant. It's even faster than Blender Eevee. And it looks great for non-photorealistic renders, which is basically what I'm planning to do with this scene. I don't really plan to texture it and you know add materials and stuff like that. I just wanna render it as it is, just record the screen with the camera and uh, hopefully it will, it will work well because you know since there are a lot of stuff, it could slow down a bit. You know, it's not 100% smooth right now, as you can see, because I do have a lot of things, but uh, you know, it's really up to you as an artist to go for a lower, lower poly version if you want to try this out. I could have went a bit lower poly with Spider-Man and stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can see that uh, the tree, for example, is really low poly over here and over here as well. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's the scene and my initial, uh, my initial thoughts on Blender 2.8 is that you know, as a Blender user who's been using Blender for a long time, it's a bit scary to start because you know everything's gonna be different and you just, you don't really wanna go through all that new changes, but uh, once you put your mind to it and you start working with it, uh, it's a really, really cool update. I'm really loving Blender 2.8. You know, the developers worked really hard on it. They're very passionate and you can see it through their work and it's improving every day. Even like from one day to another, I might have a bug right now and tomorrow download the new version, the new experimental version and it'll already be fixed. And that already happened with me with this, uh, with this scene. So my point here is that, uh, you know, you don't really have to start right now because especially if you're a complete beginner to Blender, Maybe it's better to wait it out and I'll talk more about that later in, a, in another video when I talk about Blender 2.8 and all of the features. Uh, but you can definitely download it and check it out and just try to see the new things going on. But anyways, as a Blender user, I will tell you that uh, you will get used to it really fast. So even though a lot of things are very, very, very different, it's, it's just intuition at a point. It just makes sense. Uh, for Blender users at least, it will make sense for you and the change will not be that difficult. Okay, so that's it for my initial thoughts on Blender 2.8 and the testing that I just showed you. The video is not done yet. First of all, rest assured, I will make a Blender 2.8 specific video talking about its features, what's coming, what's new, what to expect, how is it different from Blender 2.79 and how will it change the game, you know, in the industry and everything else. So how will it basically affect you? I'll also talk about the release dates and all of that kind of good stuff. I know you have a lot of questions on that so if you do leave a comment in the comment section below so that I can take that into account and include it in the video that I am planning. But for now let's talk about the exciting channel news, 3D printing and more. Mm. I've been addicted to Starbucks lately. Loving their coffee. So I discovered this coffee they do. It's called Cold Brew. Now if you're not a fan of coffee don't, don't try it out. It has a really strong coffee taste but if you love coffee go for it because I've been drinking it every day since I discovered it, it's just amazing. So anyways, uh, I invested in a 3D printer. I did a poll and you guys voted for what kind of new content you wanna see on the channel. And most of you voted for 3D printing. So uh, I got a 3D printer. Now, as I explained at the beginning of the video, it's a bit more complicated than that. 3D printing has a lot of different kind of materials and ways of working. And the one I got, it gets really, it yields good results, you know, high quality results, which we need for the characters, you know, for the kind of content I do, which is why I got it. But it's a lot more complicated to manipulate because it uses a material, a toxic uh, substance, which is called, which is called resin. And it has a lot of post-processing work and actually the printer was not the most expensive thing everything i had to buy with it and you know the stuff i always have to buy and replace that's what's really costing me with the 3d printer so i did do a test and i probably showed it earlier in the video but here you go again so uh, i printed a 3d model that i found online and uh i'll try to remember to add the guy's name uh, or handle in the video description if you want to check it out. But anyway, so it's of Spider-Man, uh, which is probably why I, I got influenced by it and did the testing Blender 2.8 with Chibi Spider-Man. But anyways, moving on. Uh, so I print, I basically downloaded it, printed it to test the printer out and see if it's working before I start printing my own characters. And uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of work, especially after the printer, uh, the printing was done. I had to do a lot of cleanup, which I'll make a video about. But what happened is, sadly. Uh, I did not take into account since the substance is really toxic and you know once I do the cleaning I can't really 
touch anything. I have to use gloves to basically handle the substance. And because of that, I can't really grab a camera and film and adjust the camera to film the whole process. So right now I have to figure out a way to do that because, you know, I'm moving uh, around the house all the time. There isn't a lot of space to set up cameras and just hit uh, play the whole time. And since it's a long process, I don't really have a camera that lasts that long. So, you know, there's that issue to think of. And there's a lot of other things as well, which is why I'm not releasing as many videos as I used to. There's that and there's also the fact that I uh, improved the or increase the quality of the sculpts that I'm doing. If you noticed, you know, before uh, at the beginning of the channel, I used to do a lot of quick sculpts and I don't even texture them. Now I do, I texture them, I retopologize them, which is why it takes a lot longer to finish the sculpt. And the video editing just takes a lot of time. It's just insane. I need to figure out a solution for that, which is why I'm not able to release more than like one video or maybe maximum twice per month, but I am trying to figure out a way to keep the quality or even increase the quality and increase the videos. And the only way I could do that is by thinking of a different kind of content such as 3D printing, but you know, that one takes a lot of time. So that's not really the solution either. Yeah, but you guys get the point. So, you know, art advice, other stuff, but I have to think of a way to, you know, keep the quality of the videos and be able to produce it fast so that I can you know, make more videos because I really, really enjoy this and, uh, you know, it allows me to put more content out for you guys to help you guys out. Anyways, uh, I wanted to keep you up to date. So that's what's happening right now. I'm testing out the 3D printing. Once I'm done and I figure out everything, how to film it and everything else, I'll start putting out my characters and putting out videos on that and showing you the whole process and everything. And also I've been thinking of doing, you know, competitions, character creations, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe even do a uh, 3D printing competition where you do a character and then the best one, I'll print it and send it to that person. That could be exciting. That pretty much wraps it up for this video. I know it's been all over the place, a lot of different information in one video, but again, I've been working on a lot of different projects for the channel and they're just taking a lot of time to finish. So I wanted to keep you guys up to date and show you a bit of Blender 2.8. Other than that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and don't forget to leave your question on Blender 2.8 down below in the comment section if you want it to be answered in the video that I'm planning. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely enjoy the next one.